Hello and happy Friday, everybody. Turgeon, I see you have an anniversary. Happy anniversary. And and we have a subversary. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Ah, uh, M. Fontana. Finally have the subversary. Okay. And it's a quadra subversary. So let us go. Quadruple subversary, quadruple subversary, quadruple subversary. Happy quadruple subversary. And Kiki! Yay! Kiki also says <laughs> happy subversary and happy anniversary, right, Bubba? You've got pumpkin on your eyebrow. How did you get pumpkin on your eyebrow? I was making her frozen treats this morning. <laughs> And their pumpkin with some baby food mixed in. Hi, Bubba. Some baby food and a little bit of canned dog food because she's spoiled. Um, and yeah, she had pumpkin on her eyebrow. That's super funny. All right. Do, 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 do. Oh, not you, Turgeon. Okay. No, no Turgeon anniversary. I was misled by the chat. But everybody got a happy Kiki sighting anyway. Yes. And I got licked. Okay, so last night, super funny. Like, David always wants her to lie on the bed with him before we put her into her pen um, so that he can pet her. And, like, last night, she was just, like, she didn't want to settle. And he's like, come on, settle down. And she got up, and she, like, walked over to where his face was, and she looked at him. And then she pounced him, and she leaked all over his face, like, total pouncing. And, like, it was hilarious. Remember that David has never owned a dog before. <laughs> he was like, ah! <laughs> like are there teeth he's like no she's licking me <laughs> so it was really awesome <laughs> oh dear oh yeah kiki gets over dogs get over this stuff if you don't make the dog dwell on a thing they won't dwell on a thing she's not gonna love the vet I and mean, she doesn't love it already that was so it is what it is it is what it is when you've got a dog i mean some dogs are just smart they get that the vet is like Never happy, right? Or almost never happy. Yeah. <clears throat> he, if, if you would have asked David, like, before we got Kiki, if you suggested that he would ever have enjoyed having his face licked by a dog, he would have looked at you like you were nuts. <laughs> so, yes. Oh, 40 months for Jabberwock. Yeah. Awesome, awesome. So, yeah. <clears throat> Here we are. Still with kind of crappy air in the Bay Area. Thanks to forest fires. Um, I told David if this keeps up, I'm getting an air filtrator. And I'm charging it to our, our joint account. <laughs> it doesn't bother him, but he also is in AC and filtered air all day at the Googs. So, yeah, right. And that is a weird dog, Zachariah. That was my point. when the, when Because one of the vet techs also brought up those dogs, right? And I'm like, those dogs do not have the amount of brain cells that Kiki has. <laughs> Like, those dogs are like, I don't care as long as it's attention. Like, and that's a weird dog, folks. That's a, just a weird, something's going on there. In fact, they've kind of proved that the brain, the brain structures that produce that in dogs are like, kind of like, like it's, it's got things in common with other like kind of deficient mental states. Like it's not, it's, it seriously is guys. Like what dog would walk in, would you walk into surgery and go, yay, I love the attention. <laughs> no. <laughs> um, but yes, anyway. <clears throat> yeah, well, that's fair. That's fair, Zachariah. That's fair. So, so her, her happy joy was, was entirely understandable, but there are dogs. I think, you know, there are dogs that are just, they just don't care. <laughs> Kiki cares. But yeah, she had issues. Yeah. Oh. <clears throat> oh, wow. Yeah. Well, that's good though, Turgeon. No, and no diagnosis is a hundred percent. I mean, unless you're like, like in that, and even then, even then, like there's just so many stories of people who buck the curve on those. Oh no, still on the phone. Oh no. Oh no. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Ignorance is bliss. Yeah. Those doggos. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. But it's okay. Um, I'm sorry, Quindy. Hey guys, I should get my new computer today. 
Given that we haven't had any Fs on the stream lately, I'm challenging you, Twitch. Um, but, but yes, I get my new computer today. It should, it should arrive. I'm going to recheck its little shipping meter. It was on Wednesday. It was like, it will be here Friday. Ha <laughs> ha, Gibson. You see, the problem with you, Gibson, is I don't trust anything you say. Yes, yes, that's the thing. That is the thing. Yeah, for sure. Oh, all right. I need to figure out what the heck I'm doing today. What am I doing today? That is fair. You totally, you always try to troll us. Like I would say, I would say out of, out of your commentary, I would say at least 90% of it is an attempt to make a joker troll. And so I won't trust anything you say at face value. This is just me because I am a very trusting Anne. Like I will always trust you in the initial stages of a friendship. But if you are always d taking advantage of my gullibility to, to, you know, to try to tell me other stuff and, and, you know, to make me feel silly, then I'm going to cease trusting you. I'm an, I'm an Anne with like, really my switch is one way or the other, because I'm going to trust you until proven wrong enough times that I'm like, you know what? I really can't trust this person. So if you, and, and, and when I was a kid, people told me I was gullible. And I would rather be gullible, i.e. trust people as a default, than to be suspicious of everything. So, yeah. I'm digital. I'm one way or the other. I'm a switch. At least on the trust meter I am. I trust until proven false. And then you're like, boom, I just have to. Because that's the way my brain works on trust. Because I have that default state of, like, trusting what somebody tells me. You know? Unless it's, like, obviously, like, somebody I don't know, then I'll double check it. But, like, as far as people on the stream where, you know, I've gotten a sense of your personalities and your, your the way you work, you know. <clears throat> but anyway, um, do, 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 do. But yes, Gibson, you, you're entirely too jokey too often. I'm sorry, but I can't trust anything you say at face value. I'm going to look to the rest of the stream to back you up. This is, this is the downside. The downside of the jokies. Um, all right. I said we were going to do Golder book today and I was brainstorming before I got on and I just don't know what to put in the book. This is the problem with freehand and with me. I tend not to just put random crap in the book. I mean, we could just do scribbles. That wouldn't be very fun. Yeah. Well deserved, Gibson Q. You do deserve. <laughs> It's the it's the little boy who cried wolf. It's it, it there's a reason that that fable is is around. <laughs> well, I mean, it's not that you use humor way too frequently. It's the style of humor that you use. But it's uh, it is what it is. I'm just warning you guys. That's how I am. Like I will trust you until you like burn me and make me look silly one too many times, and I'm like, I'm kind of sick of feeling silly. So mm, yeah. But yeah, I was I was the gullible kid. I was the kid that would that would trust somebody coming up and telling her something, and then they would laugh at me. Right? I was that kid. So somehow I managed to make it to adulthood, still having my default of trusting humans, which I think is quite the achievement. I should get an achievement for that. I should have a little pop up up in my head. I've been reading way too much lit RPG. Ah, <laughs> uh, too too tiny, dog father. Can't do that. Um. It's 28 millimeter books. You really like the best you can do is put a header on a page like we did with, um, we did with this one. I managed to get expel cat on there, but if you compare, you can see that that book is a bit bigger and that's why I was able to do it. So yeah, it is. It is agent marble. Yeah. Believer in humanity achievement, uh, uh, achievement unlocked, right? Um, but yeah, so you can't really do that sort of thing. You could do a header, you can do a graphic. Um, I mean, yeah, I'm going to just work on the gold today, I think, because I, I, you guys can like toss out some ideas. Remember who she is though. Remember, I like to make the content, if we're going to put any content at all, um, it needs to be a very, like if we're going to put a header on here and that's really, or a graphic, it needs to be simple or short. So, and it should fit her character. It should fit her character. 
Like, I kind of wanted to almost put... I almost want to put dating advice. <laughs> Far more sarcastic. Yeah, and see, and I just got to dislike sarcasm. Like, I also went through that stage as a sarcastic kid. Um, but I, I prefer, I don't know, I like, I like dry humor. Um, I, I totally have stopped, stopped self-deprecating humor as much as I, as I can. Like, I think I've, I've almost completely nixed it at this point. I used to self-deprecate a lot because I had that whole, hey, if I insult myself, I'm beating the other person to it thing. And that's just silly. You should never be bad to yourself like that. Um, but anyway, so yeah, so I'm going to work on the gold. Y'all can toss off. Um, <clears throat> Yeah, well, watch more British sitcoms. <laughs> I grew up on British humor, so so I I have this this like l like love of it, um, and also the outward the the extremely silly stuff. Like I had extremely sillies going on last night because I also grew up on Monty Python, um, but yeah, Dad would watch a lot of British uh, British shows when I was growing up. So all right, let us uh, clear off my table a little bit here. <clears throat> and get our gold going on. Mystery date. I don't know. I don't know. I'm, I'm looking for... Yeah. Yeah, I was never a Mr. Bean fan. Poor Mr. Bean. <laughs> I have too much sympathy for the downtrodden characters. But, uh, but yeah. Do do do. As I stopped watching television as I got older, I kind of gravitated out of it, but... So I'm going to mix up my shadow color, which is usually a mix of russet brown and brown liner. Um, I like the warmth of russet brown for gold, but uh, brown liner, I need the dark, especially on a 28 millimeter model. If you don't go dark enough with your, your shadow, it's not going to show up, because it's that whole we have to exaggerate crap on the 28 millimeter thing. Um... <clears throat> Speaking of more 28 millimeter, I will be streaming tomorrow on my own channel at 3.30 p.m. ish USA Central Time. We'll be working on the owlbear with the feathers um, and, uh, and the cute little paws. And we'll be working on blocking in the rest of these feathers with our blue um, and also uh, maybe starting some fur texture. And I need to figure out, I think I'm just going to bring my blue around because I, I originally was thinking maybe I would make these different sections, but now I'm thinking maybe I'll, I just won't. Uh, maybe I'll make, instead, maybe I'll make chevrons or something down the back on two of these feathers. Speaking of which, Derek, I think, just told me yesterday he put up a thing on painting feathers <clears throat> on uh, Reaper forums, I think. I can go check it. But anyway. <laughs> That's kind of funny, Pendrake. The problem is the bookmark, though, you know? Like, the bookmark is covering the one page. So anyway, so that was just a, sorry, I, I was catching up on chat. So that was just a plug for my stream tomorrow, for my personal stream. We're going to do feathers, and we're going to do some fur, and we're going to do some owlbear in general. Uh, cause I be there. That's what I be doing. Last night I base coated my dragon bust. I'm trying to take everything very small. So I've talked about this before guys, but if you find that you're having, you're being blocked in painting, um, one of the, the best things that you can do is to, to find one, find a model that you really love and then break down what you do on it. Honestly, in baby steps, like tiny baby steps. Like honestly, last night it was put teal coat on dragon. Like Put base coat on dragon. That was it. Like, that's all I had to do. And so it was done. And then I got to read a little bit at the end of the night because I had accomplished. I had, I had accomplished my thing. Um, charm self. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that self-help. Hey, you're, you're, you're totally like, um, you're, uh, you're appealing to my, my soul there, Bazette. Because I, I uh, or Basil. Because I totally, uh, I, I read a lot of self-help. <laughs> huh. Now I'm going to have to think. Now I'm going to have to think. I wish we had more room. 
Because if I had, if that, if that bookmark wasn't there, it would be funny to put eight ways to charm his pants off. <laughs> that would be funny. I would like that. I might be able to do it. Eight, like, I could put the eight, two, but a charm will be. Yeah, it, it's just, just the, the bookmark, the freaking bookmark. <clears throat> but yeah, it's the baby step thing. So, so what you really want to do is like, honestly, just lay it out like that. And because base coding the dragon, I mean, he's a gem dragon, so it actually took a long time because you have to get behind and, and between all those gemstones. It's not just a simple base coat. Um, so I did that, but then I had enough oomph at the end to put the black on the underside and back of the dragon. So I was like, all right, cool. The werewolf paladin book. It's not too late to carve the bookmark off. Oh, but I like it for a color accent. Aw. Yeah. I don't know. Maybe I'll do it and and, uh, and I'll just cover up. So it'll be Jeopardy, where where you guys will know what it says. But, uh, but otherwise, anybody else would have to figure it out by the context, right? Because 8 and then W and the rest of it is gone. To cha his pe off. Like, we could do that. We could absolutely do that. And then it wouldn't be obvious. And that would almost be better. Because then people would have to try. <clears throat> no, no. I would never do that. I like that. You, you need color accents on this model. And that's the only spot of red right now on the front unless I can unless I put like some red decoration on her um on her cloth down here which I actually thought about doing uh so but it would be super funny so let's do that let's do that I like that eight ways to charm his pants off you got it or it should it be seven should it be seven because that's a magic number right but eight is a different magic number eight however has has um troubling connotations in numerology so maybe we should go for seven seven and nine are good numbers eights tend to be a little Three is a good number. Three is in numerology is a number for friendship, friendship and gatherings. It's a good, it's a positive number in tarot as well. Uh, except for, except for when it's in the, the, the suit of swords, when it's definitely, definitely not a good number, but yeah, in general, no, that's see, that's too complicated. Zachariah too, too complicated. Yeah. So here's, here's an example of crap that sticks in your brain that like, you should have gotten out of your brain ram long ago in order to um, to make room for more important things. Last night, David's painting his demon prince, which will eventually be a golden demon entry. And he's just like, I wonder if there's a number that's associated with Zeech. And I'm like, nine. And he's like, he just looks at me. He types in a Google search. The number of Zeech is nine. He's like, what the? <laughs> No, like if you didn't directly ask me that question, it's not like I would have summoned that out of somewhere, right? But somewhere, some little chunk of my brain ram knew that and was like, beep, beep. So funny. The GW like crazy like lore that I've retained. Uh, 13, sadly, we don't have a lot of room. Maybe we could do 13, but then I couldn't get the W in. <clears throat> yeah, we'll have to we'll have to figure it out. Maybe 13. But yeah, I don't know. We have to have enough of each word that we can uh that it can come through. But we'll uh we'll have to try that toward the end. I'll I'll double down on my brown liner. There is an actual F. See, and because other people said that, Gibson, I was able to trust you. <laughs> Shall, uh, let's, uh, let's see if it keeps going. Maybe it didn't like our title. Maybe it didn't like that. Maybe I invoked the, the ire of Zinch. Okay. We, uh, we did not DC. All right. Well, let us attempt to keep going. And if we, uh, if we get, is it the crazy spike stuff, Quindy? Like the up and downs on the back end?
I blame Gibson. <laughs> um, because otherwise I'm not going to be able to fit it on, Pendrake. I understand that that is a rare thing in contemporary books. I don't really care. If it's funny, we'll do it. But we can't do it on, just on the one page. It won't work. Something that complicated, I've got to do it that way. So... You go, you do you, Gibson. Looks like it's leveling out. All right. If we keep having problems, I'll just restart because that has worked before. Um, I trust it to work again. There is my yellow. Oh, what yellow am I using today? I guess I'm good using the lantern because I got a new bottle. All right. <clears throat> So yeah, just a like spike. All right, not an AM spike. It's that's a problem. Is it can be? It could be me, but it could also just be Twitch. So when we see the recurring stuff, I'm inclined at this point to think that it's my network card or whatever. But then when we see those individualized, so nice, um, issues, it could just be Twitch. It's, yes, it's not a contemporary book. It's an ancient tome of spells. Yes, full of dating advice. Because, you know, people have always needed dating advice, guys. I'm sorry. Since there's been dating, there's been dating advice. I'm, I'm willing to die on that rock. I'm pretty sure that that is true. Back, back in the dawn of time, when you were considering shacking up with another caveman or woman, I'm pretty sure there were people giving you dating advice. Pendrake, here. I just don't care. <laughs> it's funny. <laughs> there are many times that I will go for historical ver verisimilitude as a default. Um, I often like doing that on larger models. However, sometimes there's just room for comedy. And I warned you that I was in a, entering a silly period last night. I'm still in that, obviously. And Silly Ann does not care <laughs> about, about historical verisimilitude. Silly Ann just likes that idea. So we're just going to go for it. Mostly because we have a stupid bookmark blocking up the page that we would normally put a title on. And we can't just fit it on the other set. Uh, that, yeah, that's a little bit too hard to do on a book this size. You're, you're welcome to try that on a really big book. Ancient books were scrolls. <laughs> Thank you, Ancient Marvel. <laughs> oh, man. But yeah, there's just times you gotta be silly. There's just, there's just sometimes you gotta be silly. I mean, if we come up with a better idea that can be done on a single page, maybe I can do that on a single page, but boy, it would take some serious brush gymnastics, guys. <laughs> the 80s. <laughs> the 1080s. The 80s. <laughs> yeah, I don't ever care about historical accuracy on somebody else's fantasy figure. Good point. Good point. Yep. It's true. I mean, I mean, it's fair because Pendrake knows that I do care about historical accuracy a lot of the time. Right? I, I regularly do care about that. Today, I am a bit whimsical for an Anne. And, and Whimsy knows no historical benchmarks. Whimsy just wants me to do something fun. <laughs> Pepe the Prawn. Yeah, yeah. Luca and I, I, I fear that Luca and I would get along pretty well in person. The silly factor. I, assuming I was in a silly mood, it, it might be it might be bad. There might be a silly implosion. I am capable of being very silly. Those times when David looks at me and rolls his eyes and he goes, "You're in one of those moods, aren't you?" <laughs> oh dear, Zachariah. I'm so sorry. 
when dinosaurs walked the earth, at least it wasn't that, right? Although I was reading uh, a little just human interest blurb about the, there's a 107-year-old lady in the Carolinas. She's still doing, I mean, pretty well, all things considered. 107. Can you imagine, guys? But yeah, when she was a kid, like, do the math. Like, cars were just, like, starting to be a thing on the roads. <laughs> Alright, so we've got some gold stuff going on here. We got our colors, our colors, there's our main colors, there's our shadow. And I'll get my pure white and we can rock it. We'll rock this gold out, get it all done. Oh no! Artichoke spread. It's precious and tasty. It's, I'm so sad that, that your artichoke spread was partially um, wasted by splatters, Quindy, because artichoke spread is, like, divine. Every once in a while, David and I will get artichoke spread from Whole Paycheck. I try to stay away from Whole Paycheck otherwise, but for parties and things, for gatherings, for our wedding, we got artichoke spread. I love artichoke spread so much. Yes, and all over your keyboard. Oh no. Oh no. So sorry. F in the chat for the artichoke spread. Alrighty. Yeah, I'll try to do the seven ways to charm his pants off on the one side of the page, maybe, just because it'll be easier. Um, and I won't have to worry too much about the bookmark. I'll think about that. <clears throat> it's going to be difficult. Really difficult. Too early in the day for that, Zachariah. And not and wrong stream. Wrong stream. You needed to be that, that with uh, that, that for Luca. That's a Luca joke if I ever heard one. Yep, yep. Playing the part of Luca today. You know, Quinny can ban you. <laughs> and I'd rather she didn't because you're one of my treasured beta readers. I like having you on the stream, Zachariah. <laughs> Please don't offend Quinny so much that she just decides to get out the ban mallet. When she's like, I really don't need to, to deal with Luca Mark II today. Yeah, you should not scrunch. Do not scrunch. We're already condensed too much. Like, I found out that I've shrunk. Like, that it's terrible as you get older and you compress, right? And I was like, maybe I haven't shrunk yet. And they're like, oh yeah, you've shrunk. And I'm like, oh. I can't even claim 5'6 anymore. I was always the shortest one in my family, and it's only getting worse. Damn it. Why, gravity, why? I don't know. I think I might do 8. I don't know. But 7 is funny, and I can do it kind of like cartoony. You need to conserve it. You're sick. Well, I'm sorry to hear that. Do 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 do. All right. <clears throat> so anyway, to totally loop back to the thing I was saying like long time ago, except that we got totally distracted by crazy silliness in the chat. Um, yeah, when you're uh, when you're stuck on a model. Take a step back, ask yourself what's the simplest next step that you could do that would still make progress, and do that. Like tonight, I'm going to line around the mouth and eyes of the dragon bust. 
and maybe add some reddish coloration if I still feel like it, if I've got the oomph. He is very teal aqua right now. So we'll concentrate highlights on the top part here, closest to the light, like we did over here. Um, we don't have a lot of white showing through up here yet. We got a tiny bit there that I could bring out though. Oh, cleaning because you're sick modes. Yeah. Mm hmm. Using the sick time to organize your environment because it makes you feel better, even if it won't actually cure you. Yeah, I do that. There we go. So that's a little clearer. But yeah, I ended up base coating in teal aqua plus a little bit of white. So it was like six to one because I decided I wanted it just a little lighter to start with. I'm going to take it dark and I'm looking to do some interesting color shifting on this model. So we'll see if it works um, on my dragon bust. I mean, oh, and I need to grab that color because I want to help. I want to use that. <laughs> there. Aha. Yeah. That. So we shall see how it goes. But I'm at least making progress doing one simple step on things per day. And I always forget. It's something that we know and yet we always forget. Oh, a bird hit our glass. It sounded like it hit the glass just like in there. Weird. Like the birds are ridiculous these days here. I even have like window adhesives on and it's helped. But sometimes the bird is just like, nope, I'm ignoring that stuff. And tonk, it hits the glass. We haven't had an actual stunned one yet. They don't seem to be flying. Uh, yeah, you heard the window, window pane, yeah. <clears throat> it's like, come on guys, you've got plenty of vegetation out there to fly into to hide. Why must you fly towards the giant reflector things? It might be one of those goldfinches. I swear they have less, like if, if there is a bird other than the dodo that gave rise to the expression bird brained, I, I hold that it is the lesser goldfinch. Those guys, those guys are a little bit lacking. I switched their bird food and they're probably sulking because I need to use up more of the inferior bird food. And also I suspected that they were uh, taking my, my shelled seeded nut mix, which also has peanuts and like pistachios in it and like dumping the peanuts because they like the sunflower seeds better. And that just attracts more rodents. So I was like, uh, screw you guys. So we'll see. I'm, I'm experimenting to find the right mix, the right mix of tasty and uh, not as much waste on the ground. Or break themselves, Turgeon. That's the more of the danger. Um, you're, the birds hit so hard. Uh, yeah, that's the thing I, I dread, Quindy. These are not mirrored, thank God. But yeah, I would feel so bad if birdies died. Because even though I, I make jokes about the goldfinches, they're still cute. There is one goldfinch. Oh my gosh. And I've seen this. I've actually watched a nature documentary on this with seals where, where a baby animal keeps trying, or an adolescent animal keeps trying to act like a baby to get extra food. Inferior food food. Good <laughs> bird food. Yes. Good, good gamer tag. But there's a goldfinch that's obviously like almost fully fledged, like has, has adult patterning. I think it's a she. And she is just a little piggy. She like sits there and does the crying, you know, like wing flapping, I'm distressed, I'm hungry, like thing. And at first I didn't, I didn't think, uh, I didn't realize what she was doing until one day I saw one of the uh, female goldfinches get just so exasperated that she actually did feed her. 
And that was just like, yeah, so it might only work like one out of every 20 times, but when it works, she gets extra food and she didn't have to. And she's sitting there on the bird feeder. All she has to do is eat it. Yeah. So silly birds, silly birds. <clears throat> yeah, I mean, sometimes you just have to get out of your own way and cheeks. And it, it varies depending on what kind of painter you are. Because for me, um, if I slow down, I'll paint better. But that said, if you, uh, if you haven't ever speed painted, you can learn techniques when you're speed painting that actually do help your slow painting, your, your more careful painting as well, like wet blending. Wet blending is probably the biggest game changer. When I learned wet blending, I sped up a lot. And I mostly learned it in self-defense for speed painting stuff at cons. And uh, so even though it's a fast technique, you can use it to get really good. Like right now, I'm actually blending, doing wet blends, little spot wet blends. Um, not as extreme as I would if I was trying to do this for uh, for a con speed paint, speed paint, right? I would be going a lot faster and a lot more drama, but... But yeah, there are definitely techniques that you can lean into as a when you learn speed painting that you can transition to um, to higher level painting. Let's see here. I'm gonna go and give that a highlight. Yeah, um, problem, my problem here, um, Richard, is that the rats and, and mice will drive the squirrels away. So actually, I, I figure, I'm not sure a squirrel feeder is a really good idea for me. Uh, it might just make things worse, because our, our rats are, and mice are arboreal. They do climb trees here. They're not as good in them as the squirrels are. But um, I do have a squirrel that has come to investigate the nuts that were dropped on the ground at the bird feeder here. And the other day I watched a rat take it out and win. Like that squirrel did not want anything else, anything more. Like it just went, the it's like, this is not worth it. So, cause there's a lot of rodents around this area and not enough predators. But yeah, we've got niger seed and sunflower chips in one feeder for the finches. Uh, they like that. And then the other feeder is the Squirrel Buster, and it just gets a mix. It's mostly sunflower, hearts and chips. Although I'm thinking of switching all the way down to chips because we mostly have small birds here. And the big hearts are um, a little bit too big for some of the species. But yeah, I really like my birds. So we're gonna just create that blend. I'm afraid the birds are going to have to, well, I'll, I'll fill the feeder super full before we leave for Hawaii next month. It'll probably last, but I have to turn the fountain off because it'll likely evaporate and I don't want the pump to burn out. So, and I, and I won't be here to refill their little bird bath. So they'll probably won't have any water from us for a little while. They'll have to deal. Yeah, my squirrel buster is mixed mixed feed, mostly sunflower. But I, I bought a big bag. Back when I was starting out, I bought a bag of mixed seed that had a lot of sunflower in it, but it still has a bunch of other stuff. And that's the stuff that they're like, eee. So I'm slowly, essentially, mixing that in with the mostly sunflower mix to get rid of it. Birds are silly. All right. I don't know if bobcats are native. You'd have to Google that one, Hendrik. Um, not as many as you might think, maybe four. And cheeks, when you're dealing with 28 millimeter, you really don't need a lot of highlights in small areas. I would say we've got a shadow here, we've got a mid-tone, we've got a first highlight, we've got a second highlight. And my second highlight is almost an off-white.
We don't have bobcats in this neighborhood. We do have foxes around, like not in our neighborhood, but um, in more like on um, the tr the bike trails and stuff where there's some little pockets of brush and wilderness. Yeah, the chipped ones. Yeah. Interesting. Never in the scroll boxes, huh? I'll look. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll look into it. Because I, I kind of like, actually, I'm really sad that we had a, we have a ground squirrel, a California ground squirrel that lives around here. And I've seen him a couple times uh, at our feeder, but the, uh, he's definitely vulnerable to the, the rats. So he or she, so I've only seen that animal a couple times and I haven't seen it lately. Um, which is a shame because it's terrible cute and has really interesting fur. But yeah, I mean, e even if you're, if you're painting like the, the nicest, uh, 28 mil, I find that five layers is, is max really, unless you're working on a very big, broad area, then you could probably do more. Like I've done reds on capes and cloaks and dresses that I've taken up, you know, maybe six layers. Um, but the fact is when you've got such a small area, you really don't need that many transitions to get a good effect. Because <clears throat> it's just so small. And if I'm trying for a smooth blending, I'll do more, but it won't be more colors. It's usually just going to be more, um, like more layers of my really thinned colors. But here on stream, I tend to um, paint for like Reaper gallery level, which is not competition level. So if I were doing this for competition, I actually would spend more time on the hair. Probably glaze and re-highlight. And make sure that it's really smooth and bring everything out really tight. And uh, it looks good right now, but it could look better. But I want these, <coughs> I want to go through these models like not take an entire half a year on, on each one. So I do tend to use more, I don't spend as much time making everything smooth and perfect on, um, on these stream models for Reaper, Reaper gallery, uh, as I would, if it was a competition piece, like as I move into doing my competition piece for, um, moonlight minis for next year's ReaperCon, I'm going to be spending a lot of time making the skin tones like smooth super smooth and uh it would be a lot more work than i would put into a model that i did for the stream but it's also really boring repetitive work which is why i don't often do it on stream yeah red is one of my favorite colors to paint too black yep yep with black like kind of judge your surface area and keep about 75 percent of it black just black Pick out like the textures with your highlights and don't go too broad. As you've noticed, when you go too far, you get gray and that's usually a surface area thing. So if you, if you look at like any given fold of black cloth or area of, of black that you're doing, do I have any black these days? I don't, we haven't done black for a while. Um, but look at it and essentially, oh gosh, I haven't painted black for a long time. Maybe we should do some black. Oh, it was the Necromancer. We are doing different kinds of blacks on. Um, but yeah, you kind of have to judge the surface area amount and then 25% of it, that's where your highlights go. And how high your highlights go, like how much toward white, depends on how reflective the surface is or how shiny the surface is. So in your mind, ask yourself if it's shiny and you can go up higher with highlights for that. That's really what determines like in the end, if you're trying to go for something that reads as real or realistic, that's what determines how high your highlights go. 28 millimeter, we do tend to push our highlights higher just because we have to bring out the details. So 
as you work with bigger models, you drop the level of highlighting down a bit because you don't need as much to convey information. But of course on 28, our details are so small, we do tend to over-exaggerate. So I might take black on a 28 millimeter up an extra level compared to what I would do on a bust or a 72 millimeter. Yeah, now you can look at her all the time, Quindy. <laughs> Yeah, just that model had to go to you, Quindy. It was just, there was there was no way I was giving that to Ron where it would just languish, languish in some huge reaper case or in the pile of stuff on his desk. Like, what a waste. I would, I would much rather give it to somebody who really appreciated it. And that certainly was you. All right, I'm going to thin my brown a little bit. Yeah, red is one of my favorite colors to paint, for sure. And my least favorite color to paint is blue. Particularly dark blue. Light blues are easy. Light blues, mid blues, grayish blues. Gray blues are actually one of my more favorite colors to paint. But when it comes to dark blue, getting it to, um, if you need to make it smooth, it's a, su a royal super pain. Like I almost have to do textures on it. So dark blues I find the hardest. Those dark transparent blues. Really hard to build brush build the highlights on them without getting brush strokes. Oh nice. Excellent, Quinty, excellent. See she's valued where she is. That's good. Like I said, Ron gets so many nice models of mine and these days, I don't think they even have anybody like really photographing the models for um, <clears throat> for the website. Like, I, I probably have to start photographing my own models before I send them to Ron. Which probably I should do anyway because, you know, Instagram and all that stuff. Need to reline around this belt a bit, though. Um, I mean, black is even a little easier to blend, honestly, Pendrake. The problem with blues, I've kind of talked about this before, but the problem with blue is that the pigment is so very transparent when it's near its, its pure state. So any dark blue um, tends to be, like void blue, tends to be very, very transparent. Um, and when you add white to that, white being one of the more the most opaque pigments... Uh, it naturally just is going to, every brush stroke is going to show because you're putting it over something that's like perfectly translucent and then you throw opacity in there. And so you're fighting against that effect. Um, black is not as transparent a pigment. And in fact, the blacks from Reaper are pretty darn opaque, uh, especially if you're using the high density pigments. So it, it, does, it does not create the same problem. It is not the range of contrast required, but the translucency of the pigment that is the problem. Um, I do sometimes. I don't often do it on this stream and cheeks, but I have. Uh, I don't so much always go complimentary either. Like Rock Troll. Let's do Rock Troll. We, we showed him a couple times. So this is one of the bigger models that I painted for the stream. Uh, but Rock Troll has actually, I love to shade greens with purples. So it has that indigo color in the shadows to build the indigo. Um, indigo, you know, since it does have some purple in it, technically it's got a little bit of red pigment in it. But I actually like the way that purple shades shade greens a little bit better than the way red shades them. Red will take a green kind of brownish, which is, is a good uh, color shift. But for this, I wanted a very cold um, ambient, so I went very much with the indigo instead for my shadows, and I like how it turned out. Um, so essentially, I'll use any color in a shadow if it gives me the effect I'm headed, I'm looking for. 
And on stream, sometimes I'll use complementary colors and shadows if I'm working, essentially if I'm working on a model where I want to demo that. So what I do on stream here is, is like really, it depends on the model and how the, how my inspiration is running. But, um, but when you get down to, for example, this yellowish cloth, I'm also mixing the shadows with the indigo, and there it's almost a direct complement, right? So different areas of this um, are more or less complementary to that shadow that I'm using uniformly over everything. So, but, but I don't believe that, you know, you always reach for complements. Let's see, where's another one? This one. So this one has purple shadows, snack. And uh, so on the green, that's complementary or not complementary. It's, you know, using a secondary color, but on the, on the brown, the golden brown and on the gold, it is complementary. So yeah, I'm less about, I will use a complementary color, but I do not consider myself constrained to always use complementary colors. The good thing about a complement is that it allows you to mute a color without losing a lot of saturation. Like you won't lose as much vibrancy. It won't ash it out like adding black or something with black in it would. So if you want to keep an intense color, but you want to mute it just a little for shadows, that's why you reach for complementary colors. <clears throat> and that's why that's a thing. So, so when painters do that, they're pulling from 2D art which is, that's how, that's the natural way you mute something without having to add something like black or brown, um, which definitely kills a lot of your color. So if you want to keep a certain level of like, like vibrancy and you just want to dim it a little bit for shadows, that's when you would use the complement. Oh no hiccups. Yeah, I love Snack. Snack is good. Snack is a good girl. I'm still, I'm getting closer to maybe going back and finishing that base on Snack. I don't know, I like her though. I don't really want to finish her and give her to Ron. <laughs> uh, but I do, um, I do have some nice ferns and, and forest plants and stuff. And I was just looking at um, some 3D SDL ones since of course I've got the, uh, I've got the 3D printer up and running now. So now the world, the world is, uh, is open. But yeah, so I guess I could do a, well, let me do a here. So, and you also, the other thing about using complementary colors is that you usually aren't running into nearly as many pigment interactions. So if I take a, um, let's take a color with a lot of black in it. So I could mute this yellow by adding a little bit of brownish black. And that's going to almost shift it a little green. And what's happening there is that you're dealing with the interaction of the black pigment with the yellow pigment. It will go greenish. Um, but if I instead reach for a purple, and since I've got that, I probably want to reach for a blue purple. This isn't a pure yellow by any stretch of the imagination, but it is still fairly saturated. So if I reach for wild violet, for example, and I grab some of that instead. Let's put a dot of it right there and then just add it. Now this is very bluey. I may end up having to go with a reddish purple. I usually do like reddish purples a little bit better. Where's my runic? There it is. So let's actually do this. There. So usually given the choice between the two of these for a yellow, I'll usually use the reddish purple. And that is gonna give me a muted yellow for a shadow. It's gonna go more brown, see it? So I can essentially mix that purple in there and notice that it's still, it's like more intense and it's um, it's less kind of like, it's definitely less greenish. It's more of a natural shadow. If I pop a little bit of this violet in now, I can really shift it toward brown without worrying about the blue taking us green. So that creates a very nice shadow for that ochre. And it's still a pretty saturated shadow. This is still pretty, like it's got a good color to it. It's not ashy, it's not dead, it's not green. So that's why you would use complementary colors. That's, that's the reason behind. I find that a lot of people on, on the internet will give you rules without explaining why those rules work and where they come from. So that's why I just took a little bit of a bunny trail to explain that because 
I do have a background in 2D traditional art, and I did go to art school. Um, I did actually learn, I feel, as far as, like, actually executing on art, I feel I learned more from mini painting than I did from art school. Um, but... <laughs> Ah, uh, tree armatures. Yeah, for armatures, it would be, Richard. That makes sense. Yeah, no problem, and cheeks. Yeah, so essentially, yeah, that's why painters reach for those complementary colors. If you want a shadow that's a little bit muted, but still has a good color intensity, um, good saturation, like you're trying not to deaden your shadows, because when you add black, black has that ashy feel. It is carbon. Um, it has that ashy feel that it 